guys doing? In this video, we're going to learn how to make a hippie bucket and how to use it, how to grow with hippie bucket. That's the first part of the video. Then I'm going to go into some other information of different types of hippie buckets you can do and different things you can do with hippie, like get away with watering every other day rather than watering every day and stuff like that. So, and a bunch of really other useful information of the hows and why it works that will make you a better grower. But first, we'll go to the first part of the video. If that's all you want to watch, that's fine. But if you want to stick around for more information, then, then do that. All right, so the first thing is, in order to make a heavy bucket, is all you need is a bucket, some sort of container. I recommend either a round or a square container. I don't recommend oval containers and things like that because they don't. I've tried them, and I don't get as good as yields from them. The roots like, seem to have a harder time growing in that shape for some reason. Anyway, so... Um, all you do is you get a bucket and then you want to drill a hole about two inches from the bottom. Now I'll talk about different ways you can figure out where you want your hole to be and, and, and how to do that. But for now, simple, about two inches above the bottom, drill the hole there. Use a drill bit about the size of your pinky, drill a hole there. If you don't have a drill bit and you can't get a hold of one, you can take a, a piece of metal um, that's you know about the size of the tip of your pinky or so, maybe a little bit smaller. Hopefully it has a point to it. A little bit and it does have to have a point though that uh, heat it up really hot with a little blowtorch or something like that and then it's red hot and then it'll just go right to the plastic make your hole you're good to go there's other ways to make holes in plastic be inventive um, but honestly drill bit is the easiest but uh, however you want to do it once you have your drill once you have the hole in there then all you have to do is fill this up with like perlite or cocoa or a mixture of the two i'll, I'll talk about the benefits of, of them but let's just say a perlite as you do the traditional way of doing hippie. Fill this up with perlite, and then you have your hole drilled there. What you do is you just pour the water in there. Um, I don't have water in here right now. So let's say you pour, this is a two liter, fill it up with two liters, which is a half gallon. Start pouring in there until you see the water start coming out your hole. Once the water comes out your hole, stop watering it and go, okay, minus whatever it is. So you start with two liters. And after it came out the hole, you ended up with one liter here. So that means you know you used one liter of water. That means you know your reservoir holds one liter of water with the perlite in it. Make sure the perlite's there when you do this, because the perlite is in displaced water. If you don't put perlite in it, you have your hole drilled, and you pour water in there, it's going to hold a lot more water than when the perlite's in there. Simple, right? It's the same thing as if you had a bowl with marbles in it and pour water in it. It takes a lot less water to, to overflow than if you have no marbles in it because the, water, the marbles are displacing where water would be normally. So make sure you put your pearl in there first. Next thing is, you plant your plant in there. It's in a rock hole cube, whatever. Put it in there, the roots are in there. The roots aren't very long yet, right? The roots are just sitting here on the top. So when you first start watering, you have to water every single day. And if it's in 100% perlite, you might have to even water more than once a day, just to make sure your roots stay nice and hydrated. Um, I've got a way of watering it once a day in pure perlite, and the roots never like dry out or nothing. Within about a week's time or less, the roots should reach the bottom of the water where your reservoir is. Now at that point, the roots will start drinking from the bottom of the water and sucking the moisture up. And so it's like a wicking effect, sucking the moisture up. And so they're drinking off this water down here. Now the reason why you want to water every day, well, there's a couple reasons why. One is that if you leave the stagnant water in there too long, they'll start growing funky bacteria that lead to things like uh, root rot or root slime. Root slime is like the worst. Anyone that's ever done deep water culture knows that root slime is a pain in the ass to deal with. And really, the only way to avoid root slime in deep water culture, even if you're using air stones, is to use like peroxide or bleach in the water or drip clean or some other product like that or some really good microbiology that eats it all up for you so it doesn't get a chance to grow. Anyway, so. That's one reason why you displace the water. What I mean by displace the water is, once you know how much water it takes, so let's say you design it to where it takes a liter. One really quick way how to do that is put your perlite in here now while it's dry, then pour your water in there exactly a liter, let's say that's how much you want to water with. See where your water line's at, if it's a slightly see-through bucket like this one, which, is, which will be fine, I don't think I'll get any algae growth or anything, but we'll see. I've grown in things like this before without any algae growth. You grow something see through like that, yeah, you're gonna get algae growth on the outside. Anyway, so um, put your perlite in there, put exactly a liter of water in there or two liters, however much you want to water with every day. And then you'll see the water line, drill a hole right there below the water line, and then that's how much you need to splice every day. As long as your plant's not drinking much. We'll get into a second. Once the plant gets to the point where it's drinking all that water, then what do you do? 
That's how you get exact measurement of what you want. So those are, those are two different ways to figure out where you want your hole to be. One is you just go, hey, hole is two inches above it, and how much water that use. Oh my God, that's too much water. Okay, use a new, get a new bucket, start over, make a little bit lower. But if you want it, if you don't want, if you don't want that trial and error, you want to feed it a certain amount of water every day. Again, how you do that is put your medium in there first, pour your water in there, how much you want to water with exactly an ounce, see where your displaced water line will be with the medium in it, and then plug it down. If you're going to be growing in cocoa, you can still use perlite to get a good idea where your water line will be. It might be a little bit easier to see than cocoa. Now, what if you're using a really dark container, like a five-gallon bucket, um, black and super thick, or whatever color it is, but super thick, you can't see the water line. It's like impossible to see the water line. One thing you can do is put your perlite in there, and then put the ounce of water in there, or excuse me, I don't know why I keep saying ounce, put your liter of water in there, then take a, a stick or something that absorbs moisture really well, and it will change color with moisture. Stick it in the bucket till it reaches the bottom, hold it there for a second, pull it out, and then you'll see how far on that stick the, the water soaked it, so you'll know how high the water is reaching. Hold it up outside next to it, and you'll go, okay, drill a hole a little bit below where that's at, bam, now you know where your water line is for exactly a liter. So those are different ways you can do it. All right, so that's pretty much all you need to know. If you want to just go out there and start growing hippie, hippie style, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Make sure you water every day if you're using perlite. Now, if you want a little bit more information about the hows and the whys and things like that, that's what we're going to get into now. So if you use a, um, well, first off, is why this works so well. So I want to dispel a quick myth is you can't overwater a plant. You'd be like, oh, yeah, you can. Uh, you, you can overwater a plant in soil. If you want to call it overwatering, you can, but technically you're drowning the plant. You're not overwatering it. The problem is, is with soil, is that soil doesn't have, when you, when you soak soil with water, and it drains out the bottom, um, you have little holes down here, a traditional grow pot, is the soil, when fully wet, doesn't contain much oxygen. It doesn't allow much breathing room for the roots, because the roots need oxygen, but they also need liquid to survive. And so you're drowning the plant, right? If you keep watering it every single day and you keep that, that um, soil moist, where it's just soggy, saturated every day, never gets a chance to dry out, the roots drown. There's too much moisture and not enough oxygen. There's, the oxygen to moisture ratio is off, and they drown. Boom, plant starts dying, right? I'm sure everyone's experienced that when they first started growing with soil. Um, if you haven't, hey, that's awesome. You did the right thing, and you listened, and you didn't overwater your soil. Um, so basically you want to like let it dry out, right? But with cocoa, it's the complete opposite. If you let cocoa dry out too long, like over a day, like water every other day, water every three days, what happens with cocoa when you do that, if you have holes at the bottom of the bucket versus a heavy bucket, that's when we get the benefit of using cocoa and heavy bucket anyway. What happens if you don't water it and keep it moist is that you start getting, you start getting deficiencies. And you'll think something else is wrong. You won't know what's wrong. Be like, why am I getting deficiencies? Why am I having this problem? Oh, maybe I don't have enough. Maybe my pH is off, and that, that often is a problem too. But maybe I don't have enough. Um, you know, I don't know. I need to put more Epsom salt in there. I need to put more because I'm I'm having a magnesium deficiency, or maybe I need to get more nitrogen, or maybe I need to get more. No, 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 no. Most of the time, that's not the case. What happens with cocoa when you let it dry out too much is you get little dry spots in there. Roots start dying. Um, you get the imbalances of nutrients and stuff like that because they, they sucked up a lot of the nutrients and they ran out of that particular nutrient. Like, let's say it's eating a lot of the magnesium in your nutrient solution and then it runs out of that because you're taking three days to water it again. Uh, then it's like, oh, I need more magnesium, but I can't find it because it's not there. It, it drank all up in, in that nutrient solution. And so getting a little bit more magnesium might help a little bit at that point, but that you're not really solving the issue really. But when you... And also, getting dry spots in cocoa is bad because roots die and it causes, you know, different um, buildup of bacteria and stuff like that and growth and, you know, you don't want that. So, when you water cocoa every single day and keep it moist, because cocoa retains a 30% um, oxygen level when fully saturated, by fully saturated, I mean you have holes at the bottom here. I don't mean that you have a closed bucket and you put cocoa in here and you fill this thing up with water until it overflows and just let it sit there because that is going to drown the plant, right? But you have holes at the bottom, the water drains out, cocoa is fully saturated now, it retains 30% oxygen. You water every single day and you keep that 30% oxygen. You're replacing all those nutrients every single day and so forth. 
Well, that's also what hippie bucket does. It's very similar. So that's why hippie, hippie style of growth is considered a hydroponic form of growing. When you're growing hippie, you can't use something like sphagnum peat moss or vermiculite because they don't have a good um, uh, oxygen ratio when fully saturated. So because it's going to be bottom feeding, right, and, and siphoning up the water from the reservoir, if you have vermiculite in here, it stays way too moist and it doesn't get a chance to dry out and you actually drown your roots because it's siphoning up that. The vermiculite stays too moist and the vermiculite doesn't have a good oxygen ratio when it's fully saturated like that. And so you end up drowning the plant. But if you use perlite, it has a really aerated, even when it's fully saturated, very, very aerated. And so it mainly is drinking the water at the bottom here. And so it's siphoning the water up to the roots and that's how it's surviving. And so you need to displace this water for a second reason, to replace the oxygen in it. So not only to avoid growth like um, algae or anything like that, mainly the root slime, not just to avoid that, but also to make sure you're replenishing the oxygen in the water. Um, if you have this water sitting there for several days, it goes stagnant, the, the, the roots have drank all the oxygen, or breathed all the oxygen, I guess, out of the water, and there's not much oxygen, and they start, and they start suffocating. And so that's like the opposite of drowning, right? There's not enough oxygen for them in the liquid anymore. If you have too much liquid, there's enough oxygen in it, but they're, they're over and bombarded with, with too much liquid and they can't really access the oxygen, so they drown. So that's why you want to use uh, perlite and then you want to, you know, or, or cocoa. You don't want to use vermiculite or, you know, soil, like a, any soil, or even just 100% sphagnum peat moss because it doesn't hold enough. It, it holds too much moisture and not enough oxygen. And so you're replacing the water every day and watering every day to get new oxygen to your reservoir. So it's kind of acting like the same thing as a deep water culture. Matter of fact, you can do this, believe it or not, with pure water. You can make a deep water culture bucket like this, fill up the water to right about here, put your plant here, water every day until the roots reach down into the water, leave it stagnant, use no oxygen bubbler at all, no air stone or nothing, Replace that water every single day. Dump it out, put new water and nutrients in. Of course, you'll be going through a lot more nutrients that way, but the plant will grow that way, and it will survive. And you won't have the problem of getting algae growth and stuff like that if you, you know, rinse it out really good every single time before you put new water in there. Um, of course, you're not going to get the rigorous growth you would out of deep water culture when you have the extra oxygen in there. But I'm just, just to prove a point, that will work. Okay, so... That just proves you can't overwater a plant, right? Because if you can overwater it, then how, why can't you stick roots in pure water with oxygen bubbles? Because you're not overwatering it, you're drowning it, technically is what's happening. So just get that myth out of your head. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be drilling a hole there about here. Um, that way I can water with um, about a, an ounce, or excuse me, an ounce, I said it again, about a liter every day. I might make it a little bit higher. Um, this right here is where it's at right now just pure water. Of course, when I put the medium in there, it can displace that one ounce up to higher. So I'm probably going to drill it right about here. Um, I cannot actually, I know from experience about where, it to be, where it's going to be at. I can put the perlite in there and pour and measure it, but I know it's going to end up right about here, about twice as high as the water by itself. And then I can drill my hole right there, and I can water this thing with about a, uh, a liter every day, and I'm going to displace a liter. So that's what you do at first. When you first start watering after the roots reach down the bottom here, you're, you know, they're not really drinking all the water at first, and so you're just placing the water, and then you're sucking it up. So whatever, whatever sauce we have underneath here, or I like using just, you know, all, all my six plants in one big, you know, flood table, or you can make one out of two by fours, like, you know, nail two by fours together in a square, put um, panda plastic inside of there, and then the bucket to hold the panda plastic down, and now you have a big area for all the water running to, and then just vacuum all the water up at once rather than have individual saucers. You can also use a kiddie pool and then put all your all your plants in the kiddie pool and underneath the light and water them all, wait a little bit and take your vacuum, you wet back and vacuum all and vacuum all the water up. That way you don't have to like do individual containers. It just makes it easier, I think, at least. Anyway, so uh, at first you'll be displacing that water every time. So let's say it's an ounce, that's what you decide. Not ounce, excuse me, uh, a liter. You decide to use the liter. And you pour a liter in here, and every day a liter comes out the hole, and it's just, you know it's displaced. So you're displacing all water with new water. That's new oxygen, new nutrients. 
everything the plant needs to access and, and grow and, and be great. It goes into your overflow, you suck it up. After a while though, when the plant's roots are big enough, it suck, it's drinking enough water, right, in, a, in a, let's say 100% um, perlite, so you're watering every single day. It's drinking enough water so that what happens is one day you go to water your plant and, you, and you're expecting, you put a liter in, you're expecting to get a liter out, but you don't get a liter out. You hardly get anything out. What that means is your plant is thirsty and hungry. It's, it's drinking all the water and all the, everything in there, right? And it's, it's sucking it all dry just about. And, and now the reservoir is gone and empty. So when you pour a liter in there, it just fills that reservoir back up, but it hasn't come out the hole yet. Once that happens, that's a good thing, actually. Once that happens, then you just start watering until you get just a little bit of runoff, and that's it, you're done. Just a few drops even, that's all you need. And that's all you have to do. And then the next day, water with the leader again, and if you don't get any, if you don't get any uh, runoff that time, again, just keep watering with a little bit more until you get a little bit of runoff. However, if you are getting displacement, you know, like a full leader, put a leader in, get a leader out, then you know it's, it, you know, it's, it's still not drinking a whole bunch of water yet. But that's just the basic principle of how it works. Now, that's some of the hows and whys and things like that. What happens if you don't want to water every single day? I, I don't like watering every day. It really gets a pain in the butt. I mean, sure, you can make a, you can make an automated watering system for under $200 and have them water all your plants for you three times a day. That's great and fantastic. But what if you just don't want to do that? What if you don't want to use that much water? You don't, you don't want to waste that much water and nutrients. Is there another way to use a heavy bucket? And this is what I'm going to do this grow, and you'll see it yourself that it works. I'm going to get away with watering this every other day. How am I going to do that? I can't do that with 100% perlite. It won't work. I already know from experience. I could use 100% cocoa in, in a heavy bucket. That will work. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to use about 70% cocoa and 30% perlite. I'm going to fill this thing up and drill my hole where I want it, and then I'm going to water every, every other day. What happens is the cocoa absorbs and holds about five times its weight in water. So if I have pure perlite in here, and I fill this up with water until this reservoir is filled up, I can pretty much just put a liter in there, and I'm going to get a liter coming out the hole. Like, or Let's say I put a liter in there, and a little bit comes out the hole. I put another liter in there, and I displace a liter. That's pretty much what's going to happen. But if I put cocoa in here, especially cocoa that's not fully saturated, and I pour the liter in here, and then I pour another liter in there, and I pour another liter in there, and no water comes up the hole. I'm like, well, why not? What's the difference? Why is it that when I have 100% cocoa in here, that's not fully saturated yet, and I begin to pour water in it, it takes a lot more water before water starts to come out that hole versus perlite. The reason why is cocoa is like a sponge. It actually expands and it holds the water within itself, I think up to five times its weight. So when the cocoa is in there, it's like, imagine if I put a big sponge in here, right? And I pour water in there. That sponge is absorbing all the water and retaining it in itself. And therefore, no water is displaced out the hole. But once, it, once the sponge is fully saturated, let's say it takes three liters of water to fully saturate the sponge, once the sponge is fully saturated, now water will start, when I pour water in there, it'll start coming out the hole. And so now basically, if I have a fully saturated sponge in here with the hole, the sponge will stay saturated because it's feeding, it's siphoning the water back up. So as the roots are you know, drinking water, let's just say we're not using a plant. This is a plain old bucket out in the sun. The water has to evaporate to get out, right? So as the water is evaporating, the sponge is sucking up the reservoir water down here, this little bit of water that's down here. It's sucking it back up into the sponge, keeping the sponge fully saturated. So now in order for that sponge to become not fully saturated, the sun has to evaporate a lot of the water, the extra reservoir water. Once it's sucked up that extra reservoir water, then it can start dehydrating the sponge itself to where the sponge isn't fully saturated. This means it'll take longer for the water to evaporate if you have a sponge in here than if you have rocks in here, for example, or perlite. So that's the analogy. So when you put cocoa in here, you have, the, you have the reservoir down here rather than the holes in the bottom. If you have holes in the bottom of a traditional pot, all the water drains through 
the cocoa stays fully saturated, but from that moment on, it becomes less and less saturated as, the, as there's evaporation and as the roots are drinking the water out of the cocoa. But if you have a reservoir down here, which is, which is a hempy bucket, not a traditional grow pot, and the hole's up here, now there's a little bit of water down here that continues to get soaked back up into the cocoa. So as the roots are drinking the water in the spongy cocoa, the reservoir is coming back up and re-moisturizing. So now that cocoa will stay moist for longer than if it had holes at the bottom, like a regular grow pot. So that's the idea, and that's, that's, what, that's the benefit of using cocoa versus using perlite, is that you're going to get, still it's going to have all the oxygen in it. If you put a little bit of perlite in it, it'll have a little bit more oxygen. So it's going to have tons of oxygen. The plant will thrive and do well. Um, I water my cocoa, my pure cocoa pots, once a day, and they do fantastic. Um, I know people that water it three times a day, and that's fantastic. As a matter of fact, three times a day is optimal, I think, but I don't have the time to do that. I don't have an automated system yet, so... Um, anyway, I think that's pretty much it. I think at this point, um, nothing really else to add except for repeating myself, I think. But I would like to repeat myself real quick about that last piece of information because it is important. So the benefit of the cocoa is that you can actually get away with watering every other day rather than watering every day. And that's, that's the goal. That's what I want to do. I want to come up with a system to where it works like hydro. It is hydro. I'll get the same results as if I were to grow in traditional pots with cocoa watering every day. And I think this will work. I've never actually tried this before with cocoa in this, in this particular way. And so if I start seeing deficiencies watering every other day, then I'll start watering every single day. Um, which would be unfortunate because I want to I come up with a way where I don't have to water every single day. I get sick of watering every single day. And I'm pretty positive it's going to work. Um, pretty sure. Because <laughs> uh, I have grown in a similar hippie style with like 50% cocoa and perlite and I did water every other day and I got good results and um, didn't really get any deficiency so I think this will work. Well stick around and see that's my new my new growing video using these these two gallon um, buckets which is equivalent to about a four gallon pot. I know that sounds weird but it's true that is if you go down to your grow, your grow uh, shop or nursery and buy a grow pot it's not, it's not measured the same as a liquid pot or a liquid bucket. So a, a U.S. two-gallon liquid bucket holds almost twice as much as a two-gallon grow pot. They're measured differently. One's measured with medium, one's measured with liquid. So just keep that in mind. So basically, it's unfair to equivocate. I'm going to do another video on this. But it's unfair to equivocate a five-gallon bucket that you do deep, deep water culture in and go, look, it, I grew this one strain let's say White Widow, and my deep water culture bucket had water to here, had stones in there, and freaking got, you know, eight ounces off of it, or, you know, got, you know, whatever you got off of it. But when I grew in a five-gallon grow pot, you know, with cocoa, I only got five ounces. That's an unfair comparison. This holds almost twice as much, almost twice as much. That's not fair. So rather, a better comparison would be compare a 10-gallon grow pot to a five gallon bucket. That holds about the same amount of amount of medium. And if you do a 10 gallon air pod or something with cocoa in it and water every single day, I can pretty much guarantee if you do everything else the same, same environment, it'll be about the same amount as you would in deep water culture or any other form of growing in a five gallon bucket. So you can also test it out too. Do a five gallon bucket, drill holes in the bottom and then make a basically make a pot out of a five gallon bucket. Do a five gallon or ten gallon uh, grow pot, and see side by side comparison, and you're gonna get about the same results. Right, so that's it, folks. Uh, I know it's been kind of a long video, but there was a lot of information that I shared there. Hopefully, you learned something uh, new if you haven't already known it before, and some of the benefits and uh, of, of, of hempy buckets. And in this case, the main benefit of what I'm gonna be doing with 70, about 70% 70 cocoa, 30% perlite, is hopefully be able to get away with watering every other day still retain full moisture so I don't get deficiencies because that, that will keep your cocoa moist longer than if you had holes at the bottom because it has a little bit of that water to siphon into it and then yeah I'll get the same good awesome results as I, I'm used to getting with uh, cocoa watering every day but I have to water every other day. Oh one other thing I want to mention that um, I think is important to note when you're growing uh, with your medium here 
is that uh, I forgot now, damn it, I just had it in my head. I was talking about the cocoa and watering every day and it's, it's here. You start off with 7%, 30% cocoa, or 30% perlite, water retention, not having to water every day. Don't know. If I remember, I'll re record this book. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this and this will help you grow better, then please leave a comment below just saying, you know, whatever you want to say. Just a shout out. Hey, thanks, bro. Appreciate it.